hard to come into Vietnam with a completely open mind. Everything we know and associate with the word Vietnam seems to be somehow related to a war. Although, admittedly, that is a bit of a draw, is to learn some of that history. There was a country here before, during, and after the war. Before we make it there, we have to pick up a good friend, Fran. He is Vietnamese. The whole thing is he's never been there before, so we're gonna pick him up in Tokyo and head to Vietnam. Every step of this world trip has taken us further away from home, to places we never expected to see. Two years ago, I would never have understood how much this journey would change me. This is why we travel. This is the reason that we're out here. We're gonna meet up with Fran in Tokyo first before heading to Ho Chi Minh City in Vietnam. Fran and Justin and I all went to the same high school together. Now he's agreed to take some time off of work and to go finally meet up with his side of the family, explore his family history in Vietnam. But the thing is he's never been to Vietnam. He's actually never been outside of pretty much North America. <laughs> hey man. Good to see you. Good, Good to see, see you. Yeah. I know you've been uh, brushing up on your uh, Vietnamese, right? You've been practicing a little bit, because last time I talked to you, you are like, oh yeah, I've got audio tapes. Yeah, I started with the tapes. Um, I finished that, but then I went on to the intermediate, and it's pretty dang hard. Being in the country is gonna be like the tapes times a thousand. So hopefully by the time you're done, you go home, you'll be like this close to being fluent. <laughs> I'm a little freaked out because trying to put all this family stuff together, and I'm not sure if it's all gonna work out. I'm a little bit scared, but. You know, we got a lot to do in, in a short period of time. All right, let's roll. All right. We're leaving Tokyo and the sun's heading down over the horizon for like the second time today. <laughs> anyway, another five and a half hours we'll be in Vietnam. arrived in Ho Chi Minh City, uh, or as people who would date us by a few years would probably know it better as Saigon. This is my mom in Brantford. This is Duong's mom. These are my three cousins. And this is my uh, girl cousin, Luan. She hasn't even been out of Ho Chi Minh City. We're planning on having her come with us for the majority of the trip. Big moment for you, eh? Hey, look at this. We're step in slow motion here. Yeah, like, step outside the airport. Shh. Where? Right there. I can spot Do him. Yeah. Oh. Fran. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Hi. Fran, nice to meet you. This is my friend. This is Justin. And this is Scott. Scott. How are you? So this is my cousin. Uh, and this is my cousin as well. Both on my father's side. It's like I'm watching this reunion on TV. Well, it's not even a reunion. It's the first time they've ever met. Interesting to see how his, his reaction is with everything, and I think he's overwhelmed right now. I really don't. I don't think it's really sunk in yet. Arriving here in Vietnam and just smelling the air, it's a great reminder of Southeast Asia. Watching these guys buzzing around like crazy, like a bunch of wild bees. Is, is it dangerous to be riding around on these? Because it seems pretty dangerous. No, the more crazy, the more interesting. Don't <laughs> worry. <laughs> one. Okay. One. Okay. Three, one more. We know that being a socialist country, we're going to have a different experience. The war is going to have affected this country. But there's a lot more to this country, and a lot of years have passed since the end of that war. Just driving around here 
out here, man. This is pandemonium. I can't believe how many scooters are out here on the road right now. Stopping here, we almost got rear-ended by a van, but everything just works out magically. Yeah, it doesn't even matter because you can't look cool on a scooter. So you can put flowers online, it doesn't even matter because we just never look cool. <laughs> so you just bought ice cream for yourself? <laughs> Pretty much, man. What about all these guys? Look at these guys. Who wants ice cream? Put your hands up, you want ice cream? Ice Round of ice cream for everybody, dude. <laughs> ice cream, ice cream, ice cream. I think we got the coolest gang here in the city. The cool, the ice cream gang. Yeah. Let's I don't go. think anyone's gonna mess with a couple of dudes eating ice cream on scooters. That's right. I'm getting one. They're off now. We're we're leaving, and we are gonna go on our way to uh, Luanza. It's my cousin. Hello, Scott. Oh, you got, you got, you got hugged. You got hugged. I, I hugged her. I hugged her. There it is. <laughs> <laughs> How are you? I am. What was your first impression? My exact yeah, like what you thought you were going to see. Yeah, I didn't expect to see this at all. Much more beautiful than I thought. Better than your apartment. I'll yeah, you it definitely is better than my apartment. <laughs> Every country, different types of food, and frog is uh, will be a first. Okay. Justin, will you uh, wishbone this guy for me? <laughs> Why not? Ready? Oh, oh man, I don't like wow. that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I guess right. I lost. You know that in Vietnam, uh, when you join the party, your family party, no run, no go home. So basically, you have to be drunk to leave there. Yes. No, no, if you're drunk, you can't leave. <laughs> Oh, so they make that. you drunk so they can yeah, keep you captive. Yeah. <laughs> you can't leave if you are not drunk. <laughs> hey, let's priority here. Well, I sit back in Minnesota morning. I don't look like I'll be coming No drugs, no gold. Cause I need to find the thing that I believe in. So it looks like I'll be coming home. No drugs, no go home. No run, no go home. It's a one, two, three, what do you want from me? Four, five, six, you know what I'm gonna so low in. My dad warned me about you. <laughs> he said, he said for me to watch you. I know. I left you there just to sting in the station. But I was dancing to the road, pulling sound, sound, sound. And it's one, two, three, what do you want from me? Four, five, six, you know I'm gonna head back to the sticks, so it's bye, bye, bye. Now that we've met up with a bunch of different parts of friends' family, had lunch, we've had a few drinks, we loosened ourselves up, and we started to cruise through a bit of Ho Chi Minh City. What are you most looking forward to? Like, what do you want to see in Vietnam the most? As much as uh, the city's great here, I don't get a sense of the entire culture yet, so I'm, I'm really looking forward to the country. I always wish I have a chance to travel to the north to, uh, to visit Ha Long Bay. Okay, so this is the picture of Ha Long Bay. How many times uh, back when did we, uh, did we talk about uh, Vietnam and we're always like, oh, how cool would it be like, to go back there together? And uh, you know, we're doing it right now, so that's... We're all family. Yeah, exactly. We're all family. We're hugs. all family. Hugs. Looking at hugs. <laughs> Group hug. Group hug. Get in here. Get in here. One, two, three, Vietnam. One, two, three, Vietnam! <laughs> I'd like to introduce this my friend, he's from Hanoi, yeah, yep. my, my very best friend. And he's been traveled to all the areas of Vietnam, to the middle and to the south, so he knows the country very well. Chun's actually from the north from Hanoi, but um, you've traveled a lot, haven't you? Yeah, cool. I love to, to be uh, with you. This is our driver here. Hi. Yeah. He's our driver and he's going to make sure that we get safe. So, hello, hi. <laughs> lots of room because we've got lots of people. So. We're heading uh, south of Ho Chi Minh City to the small town of uh, Mai To. We're going to be hooking up with uh, another one of Fran's aunts, uh, some relatives that live just outside of Ho Chi Minh City. We've got to pick up some fruits, some food, some things that are going to make life a little bit easier for his aunt too, who's uh, recently suffered from a stroke, so she can't get out. She's not as mobile as she used to be.
just chugging down one of the little tributaries of the, the Mekong River. We're gonna head out into some of the floating markets around this area, not only to give ourselves the experience again of Southeast Asia, to give Fran a real experience of Southeast Asia and Vietnam and the real day-to-day -day workings of a typical village like this. You said a couple dozen. You're a translator. No help from your cousin. You gotta do it all yourself. <laughs> Can I? I know you're trying, buddy, but we, we've got to bring something. Maybe <laughs> Luann, you can help me out a little. No, 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 don't ask. <laughs> I'm done, you. I'm giving me for effort, but uh, you know what? I don't have any plantains. You don't have any plantains. Bang. Don't you? I don't. Was this your right birthday? I Woo! Got it. Chào bà Dân Gong Francisco. Không biết nha. Là cái dài dài mới biết. Dân bà gì? Hả? Dân bà gì? Đó nè hả? Gong Francisco. This one went a little bit smoother. We're uh, we're buying five pineapples for twenty thousand dong. Come on. We're learning something too. Three parents gonna think when they see this. <laughs> I think they're going to be proud. Come on, come on. That's a pretty cool way to do grocery shopping, eh? Uh, we got lots of coconuts. We're lots of coconut drinking. I got some pineapples. <laughs> My banana's not doing too good. Well, we're coming to meet Fran's aunt, and the thing is, we spent all morning collecting, going around the market. Fran did a fantastic job translating. Ciao, Kong Francisco. Uh, you. Can you give her a hug? Because if you didn't give her a hug, it's not official. I don't think I saw a hug. We really gotta keep pushing the hug. Yeah, I don't think I saw a hug. Fran, did you hug her? Did you, did you hug her? No, no. <laughs> my uncle. Go Ma and Go Wang. Go Wang. Ja, good This is the local beer store here for the whole town. And uh, this is the garage that attaches right to Fran's aunt's place. <laughs> to family reunions. <laughs> I can understand why we brought this stuff. Maybe we'll trade her up. <laughs> We're working our way out of Ho Chi Minh City to get up into the highlands. We're way out of the city. We get into these narrow streets of really heavy industrial areas and trucks, repair shops and stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Woo! <laughs> That's what we need to do is add to the noise pollution. <laughs> Come on, everybody, keep honking, keep honking. I don't know if you ever really get used to this, but I mean, this is the first time you've had to deal with this kind of stuff. You know, I don't mind this at all. They're getting, everybody's getting to where they want to be. There's like all these old remnants of uh, the war and stuff. And you have like these old uh, boxes here that used to keep like ammo. Vietnamese creativity here. You know, all this stuff's not garbage. We can still use it. We go to countries and see this beautiful church or this beautiful monastery. There's always a dark side of the country. Everybody thinks of Vietnam, not as a country, but as a war. I mean, you're not going to go through Vietnam and completely ignore or avoid the war. There are a lot of reminders of it still around. A lot of places that shouldn't be forgotten and shouldn't be ignored. We're in the area right now of Kochi, and although we're only about 30 kilometers from the edge of Ho Chi Minh City, this was actually one of the most heavily bombed areas of the whole country during the Vietnam War. 
During the late 60s, once heavy fighting had been going on in this whole area, the VC troops were able to dig a network of tunnels that stretched from the edge of Ho Chi Minh City all the way out to the Cambodian border. I think we, it's a very original, with the same site uh, in the world. Two lakes first. Cobras. Cobras. Right. Yep. The light. Turn it on. All right. Your mission to tell me what's down there. Tell me if you see any cobras. Ready? All right. This one. You're actually gonna close it up on me. No, you're gonna close it up. Yeah. Okay. 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 Hey. Hey. You in? What do you see shoes? down there? Cause there's a tunnel. Lots of bugs. Okay. <laughs> a little bit. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Okay. See you later, friend. Okay. The enemy troops coming. Attack! 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 <laughs> Did you lose your sandal? Oh. You lost a shoe? Yeah, I lost a shoe. Check this out. You want to try? Uh, I don't, I don't want to be the first one because I can see a bat right there. I think uh, I can hear bats too. No, you yeah, can see them right there. Look. I'll play rock scissors with it. You ready? You doing it with me? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. One, two, three, shoot. <laughs> oh god! Yes. Oh god! Oh god! Oh god! Oh god! I wish he came out. I know, I thought he came out, that's why I was freaking out. Did he go gone. deeper in? I don't know what he's doing. We'd be really great soldiers. <laughs> oh my god, it's a bat! I really don't want to go. Don't look, just go. I can't believe, like, the VC troops that have to live down here all the time, that's tough enough, but and the Americans did have specially trained troops, they called tunnel rats, that would come down in here, try to scope these places out and, and clear them out. I mean, as tough as it would be to be on the, uh, the friendly side of being in here, I can only imagine coming in as an enemy in this kind of tight quarters not knowing exactly where you're going, how to get around. Any corner could be a booby trap or a couple of soldiers waiting to pump you full of AK-47 bullets. All the bad things that happen in these tunnels. I mean, these, these tunnels are made, you know, for the purpose of winning a war. We're playing around with the bats and stuff like that, but you just gotta think of like, you know, the purpose of these things. Yeah. And that just blows your mind, man. Yeah. gone about 300 kilometers now from Ho Chi Minh City up into the highlands and the Lat's a refuge for a lot of people. You come up here and you get the mountain and the fresh air, you also get a different part of Vietnamese culture and the artistic side of things and that's why you find places like this. This year is crazy house. And this guy That guy's just the tip of the iceberg because it's supposed to get even crazier. We've been given this light to help us get to our room. I imagine it's going to show us more than we want to see. It's like walking through some sort of bad dream. I don't know about you, friend, but I'm starting to get paranoid. <laughs> can't find a room, start to freak out. Take it easy. I can't figure out if these frogs are real or not. Is that sound when we came in? Or you can't forget They're real. They really are fake. So this is just like everywhere else you've seen in Vietnam? Like no. <laughs> it's very unique. Yeah. Hey, look at this. Do you think it's real? It doesn't look real, but it feels real. That's a real frog, dude. Touch him. Oh, where'd you go, buddy? Must be cool. Now that's gonna creep the hell out of somebody tonight. Are you kidding me? What's going on? Ring, ring. <laughs> it's creepy. Ring, ring. Oh, that's creepy. I don't know how I'm gonna sleep tonight.
an artistic expression like this one in a socialist country like Vietnam is kind of the last thing you expect to see here. What's more is that Dang Viet Nha, the, the woman responsible for this, is actually the daughter of the third president of Vietnam, was a, a close follower of Ho Chi Minh. The woman of my parents. Up in here. This is probably the room that has uh, the most heart and the most attention to detail because uh, this whole room is kind of a, a memoriam for, for her parents. It's Ho Chi Minh and my father. That's Ho Chi Minh yeah. and your father. Yeah. And your father was the third president, yeah, third president. Of, of Vietnam. Of Vietnam. I am crazy woman in crazy house. My work is crazy house. And that's why you call it crazy house? Yeah. <laughs> okay. I would like to bring the people to the nature. Because from the end of last century until now, the people have been so much destroying nature and environment, and now they have problems. So now they can yeah. come here and be in nature. Yeah. We're going to head north through the highlands and out to the coast, and following the coastline all the way up to Hue in order to meet up with Fran's mother's side of the family. Back between 4th and 14th century AD, the Cham people decided that this was an important enough and special enough and beautiful enough place to build this massive series of temple complexes to bury kings and to worship. There's a lot of destruction to some of them as well, and more of that sadly comes from the, the American war here. The VC troops used this as a bit of a headquarters, consequently it took on a lot of heavy bombing from the Americans. It's eye-opening when you're traveling with someone who's a first-time traveler. Me and Scott take a lot of things for granted sometimes. You can read. So symmetrical. In some ways, he's having a much richer travel experience right now than Justin or I ever have from a level of personal history. It's something I don't think we can really feel unless we do it ourselves. Different than a lot different than how we used to. <laughs> uh, almost dying in Hawaii, we were what? I um, got pulled in by a, um, a riptide. A riptide in Hawaii. And then Vegas, well, alcohol poisoning. <laughs> Basically, <laughs> uh, rope swings and going to Vegas. And... <laughs> oh, uh, it's grown up, grown up a little bit. Grown up a little bit. You no, know, leading up to coming on this trip, right? Like, you know, talking to your parents as much as you were. You know, talking and emailing, conversations with them. There must have been like a bonding process there that you probably didn't have before. It's been an opportunity for me in that aspect because I haven't been able to talk to them about anything like this before. Mm -hmm. So certainly it's, uh, it's grown, uh, our relationship has grown through all this. It's a completely new travel experience for me. The joy of watching someone retrace their family steps to gain an energy and newfound appreciation for travel. head through central Vietnam, you get blown away by these beautiful scenics of rice pastures, the mountains in the distance, the South China Sea. And then as you start to get to that breaking point of central Vietnam, where you have the Marble Mountains. Nature has done 90% of the beauty, and the last 10% has been done through the inspiration of, of a couple of different religions over the years. Just like the Buddha is looking into us. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. That's his eye right there. <laughs> Seeing this stuff, I didn't really expect to see this stuff. Um, I expected more to see you guys. 
Um, but getting to see this stuff and seeing you guys is a bonus. It's very special for me too. You know, sometimes I think I've seen it all and I've seen some amazing things in my life. This year, I've never seen anything like this before. This world can shock you every single day if you let it. And coming in here and just seeing this is just, I didn't know anything like this existed. These unique experiences that really is the, the glue that holds a friendship together and I think it really brings us all closer, a lot closer. We've reached Da Nang and also getting close to, to where Fran's mother's side of the family comes in. This is where his uh, grandfather owned a, um, a little business, an old factory, and that's where his dad worked and that's kind of where his parents met. How cool is it if we find it? And then I go home and I tell my dad, hey, guess what, I found that factory. I got a name and I got, I think, an intersection, or is it just a street? Daga, Fo, and yeah, come, come to here. The factory that we're looking for, um, in the time that my parents were here, it was used as an ice factory that, uh, and they made ice for the fishermen for their catch. When did your parents leave? They left uh, Da Nang in, I think it was 77, around that time. Good. Do we have a jackpot? <laughs> I don't know. I don't think so. Let's get some lychee. Ah. Yeah, lychee. Lychee, <laughs> yeah. Don't, hey, don't get distracted. We've almost found the place. Buy uh, two of these roses. And then we'll lay the two roses down for your mother and your father. How about that? And everybody says I'm not a romantic kind of guy. That's pretty nice. Can you spot me two two thousand? <laughs> wow. Bye -bye. He knows the direction now. Oh, does he? Yeah, but not exactly the place. It was right here? Yeah. Oh. So the four stores, the four storefronts right here was um, the ice factory. It's a gaming and internet bar. <laughs> this actually looks exciting here. Hey, look at this old desk. This could have been part of the old factory. Hey, Fran? This could have been the desk your dad sat at. Let me see. No, yeah, it's too new. No, no, there's no whiskey in there. How do I say flour? Wow. Wow. I, I, I. Uh, this property is belong to uh, her father and her father ran it to your father. They got uh, evidence that the property belonged to the family. Yeah. She still has that? Yes. You want to see? Sure. Bác uh, có thể bác con xem được không ạ? No. Okay. Uh, let's call. Apparently this old woman who came out to see what all the commotion was all about, it turns out that her father actually owned this land and had leased the land to Fran's father, which he used as a factory. Ah, 
tên của ông già tôi là tên ta là Nguyễn Đình Sâm. The tenant, uh, the name of the tenant is Trương Thị Mỹ. Maybe something related to you, Trương. Trương is my last. Maybe yeah. your your grandma. Grandmother, his uh, father, and uh, friends or grandma right here. Trương Thị Mỹ, you can see, and why me? Um, Trương. Yeah. Do you? Uh, Cause he's got three copies. Is it possible for him to give one of them up? Wow. So this is great. I have something to bring home and uh, to show my father that uh, we came here and we found it. So a little choked up inside. This is the real deal, dude. Yeah. <laughs> That's the actual piece of paper your grandma signed for this land. The rains it pours, eh? Half the country later, we're here and like everything unravels in one street corner. <laughs> he never really expected to to find the factory that his dad was managing when he met his mom just down the street. This is crazy. Yeah. This is like, Fran Trong, this is your life. <laughs> it wouldn't have been a failure if he didn't find it, but he did, and it was just that much richer. That whole experience for me watching that happen was fantastic. It's amazing what you can find if you just for it. That's the funny thing, you know. Set out thinking that this was going to be more us showing Fran something, giving him an experience, and it was really quite the opposite. We're in the market here just shopping around for these uh, brass hats, these conical shaped ones that are pretty typical of uh, the Vietnamese culture. There's a bit more of a meaning to it. Fran's mother used to actually make these when she lived in, in Vietnam. When my mom and my dad were seeing each other, kind of not seeing each other or seeing each other, my dad would come by her shop a lot and he would always buy a hat for an opportunity to talk with her. So she told me that he ended up with like 20 or so of these hats. This is old fashioned Fran. Hi, fashion friend. Yeah, Welcome yeah. to the 21st century. Very handsome to you. Very handsome, oh. Yes. Here comes that charm. Yeah. So I'm just gonna pick up three of them. One for me, my mom, and my girlfriend. I'm not gonna pick up one for my dad because he's bought many in his lifetime, so we're good with that. <laughs> We're at this uh, barber shop. Just gonna get ourselves cleaned up in order to, to meet the family. You could use a little clean up yourself. Yeah, maybe on my knees. <laughs> the only hair you have is on your kneecaps. So let's, let's clean those puppies up. Oh, we're gonna pick out a special razor here for Justin. <laughs> the funny thing here too is that this side of the, the shop is a barber shop. That side? They're repairing like old fans and TVs and stuff. Got a little Elvis Presley going on there. I think we're almost everybody. Is that everything that came off my face? Yes. Wow. You said you were a pretty hairy man. <laughs> Did you call that metrosexual? Is this metrosexual? No. This is just stupid. <laughs> This is more typical of what your mom grew up in and worked in and lived in, this kind of village life as opposed to like your dad, which we've seen as uh, both in Ho Chi Minh City and even Da Nang was kind of like big business, big city, high roller kind of stuff. Oh yeah, oh yeah, she, um, before she moved to Da Nang, this, is, this was her life. Ho Chi Minh was a lot more modern, a lot more westernized than I had ever expected a, a city in, in a socialist country like Vietnam to be. Come out here and look at these rice paddies and not a lot's changed. I'm excited, anxious. I, she looks like your mom, dude. 
I can spot her. This is good. This is her right here. She looks like your mom. Chào. Chào Việt. Người nào là là chào hết. San Francisco. So this one, she's showing a a picture of her son who works as a car painter in Hanoi. Oh, there you are. <laughs> Ooh, uh, looks like I haven't had a shower in a while. <laughs> looks like I got a little niece as well. And a nephew. Ciao. Okay. Wow, wow. You said that to you really a surprise that friend uh, get here today. Let's get some hats on to protect ourselves from the sun. Normal one. Dre gets a hat too. That's where Andre's head is. Apparently. We're gonna uh, we're gonna get to work and try to help out the the neighbors and friends' family. Friends got some fertilizer here that looks like a uh, flavored salt. Sure. It's like the... Well, now we are all, we're dressed for the part. We should probably get to work. Scott's got the hoe. Friends got the fertilizer. I'm already sweating up buckets here. I got this fertilizer all over me. The woman said that Scott is messing up everything. Maybe he can harm the trees. Apparently I'm still doing it wrong. Seems like a simple task, but uh, I'm not doing it right. So I'm being shown how to do it again. It's actually harder than you think. Like I only got maybe like 20 feet, my, wow, my shoulders are getting sore, my arms are getting sore. I don't think she's gonna give it back to me. I think I, I heard them saying when I was doing this, it's okay, we'll do it again tomorrow. Take the rest of the journey, my friend. What? Work in the fields. Weren't you the one that offered to bring them beer? Yeah, I did. Beer? Hi, guy. Hi, guy. Woo! It's getting hot. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Oh. It's hard to find good help nowadays, apparently. Cha 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 cha. Good. Non. Non com. This. Look at this. Look how far it goes. It almost goes right out the door. And we got beers now. Look at that. This guy knows me. Look at that. He's just loud. All of a sudden the party broke out. <laughs> I'd like to say that we've really earned this delicious meal that's been laid out for us. That we've toiled in the fields and worked up a good sweat to really earn the bounty that we're receiving right now. But the truth of the matter is, is none of us really did anything at all except inconvenience a bunch of good people who are really trying to work hard to earn a living. To those people I say I'm sorry on behalf of all three of us. Cheers. I'm humbled by that. We just had an amazing dinner. I think what we're gonna do is we're gonna give thanks for the dinner to my grandparents here. I have to admit I'm a bit envious of the trip that Fran is, is having and experiencing right now. It's been a trip that I've always wanted to do for myself, is to be able to retrace the steps of my family and how important all of that is. Japan, Japan. 29 years old, but it's still part of a growing up process, you know. I think the older you get, the more you realize how important family is. There's a lot of really intricate 
origami. So there's little tiny bills as well that are kind of kept as souvenirs. That's a perfect fit. <laughs> and I think we need to leave a little Canadian memento of our visit. Of Canada. <laughs> Canada. We don't have a heck of a lot of time left in Vietnam, but we'd be doing this whole country an injustice by not seeing the north. We're going to hop on a flight here from Hue up to Hanoi. Yeah. Thank you. Good yeah. driver. Good driver. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. I have, I'm kind of concerned here. Problem. Scott and I are drifting apart. Why is that? Because normally, I sit here, he sits there. I don't even know where he is anymore. He's in like in the tens. We're in the twelves. Listen, he's not even Scott. He's not even responding to us. Long Bay, you're starting to see why this is a World Heritage Site and why so many people come here is because it's gorgeous. But to give this boat a little shape and a little bit of style with this sail. And uh, it's a newer material, but it has that authentic look to it. If you actually look at the sail, it's actually, there's like pieces of bamboo. Like right here, that's all bamboo. You know, I really hope Fran got something out of this trip, meeting a lot of new family members. And he's, not only is he doing that, he's soaking in his culture, his past, his history. Now that he's seen the way his parents used to live, the lifestyle that they had before they moved to Canada, I think he has a great appreciation for what his family has gone through. I'm getting swarmed here, look at this, look at this. A lot of these houses are, are separated by enough space that you really can't get from one to another unless you have a boat or you swim, but in some cases the decks are all just connected. You get from one place, from one end to the other end, you gotta use everybody's property to cross. But they have everything, like they have everything you could possibly think of. It's, and you see, I even saw a couple of like, televisions when I was walking by. Well, I, I just think that this is completely a different world from my work and maybe from all the people's work. Uh, it's more than I expected. Uh, just uh, when I sit, when I'm standing here, I feel like uh, I'm in a fairy land. Initially, the idea for this trip was supposed to be one that allowed us to share the travel experience with somebody new. But whatever it is has been a big draw for me to do a similar trip. I've been able to travel so many places and yet never end up in a place where I can explore what makes me who I am. So, you know, seeing the country through you know, your eyes and stuff like that, you know, um, you know it just, it's refreshing for, I think, all of us. There's a lot of stories. My family has been involved in, in war. You know, there have been soldiers in my family. There have been doctors and nurses in my family. There have been amazing stories. I'm out here doing this, and this is great. I don't want to let the opportunity to make that personal journey disappear. The sun goes down on Halong Bay. We get to swim in the South China Sea. <laughs> I think I was bringing a push of me in. <laughs> I'm just sitting here like at the very edge of like, eh, it's probably a bad place. I think the trip was uh, really important for all of us and doing it with a good group of friends and exploring someone's family, it's a good way of seeing a country. <laughs>